Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. The weeks are getting crazier. Uh, it's the politics. It's the election. Uh, it's Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, horrible, horrible. Uh, I, I'm fed up with politics, as I'm sure most of you are, and I'm a political junkie. But I'm going to tell you right now, I warn you up front, most of tonight's show is going to be about Donald Trump. Cannot be avoided. Uh, He has so many things out there, so many incorrect things, so many lies, so many falsehoods, so many stupid activities involved in that it has to be that way. Uh, We're not going to go very far tonight. I take you all over the world generally. Tonight, however, we're going to be in Washington. We're going to hit Europe as a whole. We're going to be in China and North Korea. That's it, folks. So we might as well get started. The stimulus bill. This would be the number five stimulus bill, actually the second big stimulus bill, supposedly comparable to the one several months ago where you got $1,200, most people, okay, in a one-shot deal and a lot of other things. Well, as we all know, the Democrats, I think it was late June, early July, came out with their they passed, they actually passed a bill and sent it to the Senate. Their bill provided for $3 trillion. The Republicans said, no way. Mitch McConnell said, uh, uh, too much money. What are you doing? And instead of having his people work on it and come up with a counteroffer, that's the way it's supposed to work, by the way, in the Senate, uh, he sat on his ass. That's the only way to put it. Until today, or, well, two weeks ago, let's say, when they started negotiating again but couldn't get any place, uh, Pelosi dropped the House's uh, demand down to $2.2 trillion, uh, a big jump down. However, it had certain essential things that people need in it. The Republicans finally came up with their counterproposal today for $500 billion. Dollars, not even one trillion dollars. This is absolutely amazing. Now, appreciate what I'm going to say. The Republicans two months ago said no to the three trillion. We'll offer one trillion. Now today, it's, the Democrats went down almost two trillion. Instead of coming back with something one trillion plus or two trillion, they come back with less than their first offer from $1 trillion to $500 billion. And they know this isn't going to pass. It may not even pass the Senate, because actually, would you believe, their senators running for re-election are worried that if that stimulus bill doesn't become law, they're going to get voted against by the Republican courts back home. So people who normally supported them. So it's a mess, and nothing's going to happen now. Nothing's going to happen this time. Nothing's going to happen before the election because the Congress goes home next week because hey, they got a campaign allegedly. And they won't be back till after the election, which means if we're going to get a four real stimulus bill, it won't be till later in November or sometime in December. And let me ask you, what good is that going to be at that point to the people who need it now, okay, who are having trouble making their rent payments, their mortgage payments, who are having trouble putting food on the table, who didn't buy new sneaks for the kids when they went back to school this week or are going back to school this week, who are really hurting. I mean, the senators got this money. They got money up the ass, these guys. Most of them are, become millionaires millionaires after they get elected. Uh, it's just wrong. They don't have any consideration for the people. Let me tell you about this new bill now that the Republicans want. They call it a skinny bill, this $500 billion skinny bill. Uh, And as I said, it's scaled down to $500 billion. Uh, Now, here's what they give you in their bill, their proposal. More money for coronavirus testing. Let me ask you. Testing's been the biggest problem next to masks. People wearing masks since... This this problem, the coronavirus problem started. Uh, What test? If you want a test, go try to get one. They're more available now, but most people would be lucky to get a test. 
Trump tells us we got a lot of tests. You want one, you get one. They're available on demand. Bullshit, okay? But they're going to put more money in for coronavirus testing. Well, what happened to the money they put in the previous baggage and the money they've allocated otherwise for coronavirus testing? We didn't get the testing we needed in the amount we needed. Then, this is wonderful. They're going to screw you in the workers' compensation area. The Republican bill in the Senate provides for liability protection against lawsuits by law employees against their employers. In other words, if you're working for a place and you get coronavirus, uh, you can't sue your employer. Unless you meet certain requirements that are so stiff, probably one out of 50 or maybe even 100 will qualify to receive benefits. They're protecting the negligent employer who's going to, in the meat packing house, is going to produce that meat that's, the houses have had coronavirus problems. Wherever there's been a problem in whatever industry, all right, it won't be a problem anymore for the employer. The employee will work because he's desperate to get his paycheck to support himself and his family. And when he comes down with coronavirus, he cannot make a simple worker's compensation claim. That's disgusting. Who are the Republicans working for in the Senate? The people or management? We know they're for the employers. They have always been. That's what they are, the party of the upper class. They are going to have uh, the pay, the Paycheck uh, Protection Program again, all right? Uh, it isn't worth much. It's going to provide up to $2 million in, of loan money to companies that are – 50% they lost in revenue because of, of the virus, and then it goes on, and at a certain point it'll be 50%. If you've lost 50% because of coronavirus, you can collect up to $2 million under the Paycheck Protection Program. This is not a small business protection, okay, loan. This isn't. This isn't. How many small businesses get in debt $2 million? <laughs> They're out of business before they pass $200,000. But just like with the last big stimulus bill, the mom-and-pop grocery stores, the little businesses on Main Street, are going to get screwed. They're not going to get any money, get any loans, because the bigger guys, the $100 million, $200 million corporations who need that kind of money, they're going to get it first. This is a real bargain, what the Republicans want to do. Now, let me say this, too. They're going to boost unemployment, $300 a week, though. How's that? You're going to, if you're on unemployment, you'll get an extra 300 a week. with 600 a week under the first big stimulus bill. But you're going to get 300 a week. However, not forever, it ends December 27th. You're going to collect $300 on your paycheck, your unemployment check, but it ends, that 300 ends December 27th. The worst thing, there is no $1,200 coming to anyone uh, because of the virus problem. There will not be, as there was big time in the first bill, and something that everyone loved and appreciated, that $1,200 check that you got in the mail or in your bank account. That really is a boost. That's good for two weeks or three weeks of Two weeks of getting ahead a little bit and maybe doing something a little extra, like going to the movies, which is expensive. That's the story. The bill sucks, and this is McConnell's fault. He knows it isn't going to pass, but he wants to give his guys something to go home to talk to their people about. You shouldn't elect Donald Trump again, and don't vote for one Republican for the Senate or Congress. The only way we're going to straighten this country out we have to have a Democratic Congress, a House rather, a Democratic Senate, so we get something done at the congressional level, and a Democratic president. Otherwise, forget the United States of America. It will not exist four years from now. Now, what are we going to talk about? I am upset about this Republican stimulus bill. Donald Trump, remember and what's one of, the, one of the themes in this political race for the president? Trump says, and his people, promises made, promises kept. Wow. You see the big signs at his rallies. Promises made, promises kept. 
Good luck. <laughs> uh, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Christoph, the New York Times columnist, uh, about a week ago read, wrote an article uh, on promises made, promises kept. And there are over 200 promises that he made before he was elected in 2016. And he goes through almost all of them <laughs> and says, why? Trump didn't live up to his word. So this promise is made, promise is kept. Excuse me, my friends, is bullshit. He starts his column with, I kept my promises. That's what Trump says, and he quotes him. I keep my promises, okay? Well, uh, Nicholas Kristof did a fact check. Let me just go through five or six with you so you can see where I'm coming from. Uh, he was going to, I'm going to build the... Great Wall on the Southern Border. <laughs> I'm going to build a Great Wall on the Southern Border. Let me tell you, the Southern Border, he hasn't built Italy, 307 miles. The, the Southern Wall is 1,984 miles. In three and a half years, Trump has built, it's correct at 307 miles, because the 307 miles he claims he built, there already was wall there which was falling apart. He renovated the wall. He rebuilt the wall. And that's it, okay? And do you remember when he said, and Mexico will pay for the wall. Good luck again. Have you seen Mexico send a penny for the wall? They said right away, even for, before he was elected, we are not going to pay for the wall. Uh, this wall's a joke. We don't need it. Do you notice, when's the last time you heard, as we did here for the first two years of Trump's presidency, uh, we, uh, you know, thousands are coming from the south. They're going to come over the border through Mexico. Thousands, thousands. They're, they're, they're going to rape our women. They're going to bring disease, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he, did every, he, he lies. He magnifies, screws up, scares everybody. People try to help. The government gives them some money. He's the one who put these people in cages, took babies out of the arms of their mother, and... We don't hear about it anymore. And do we hear about the hordes of thousands of coming over the border? Uh, do we hear of crimes being committed, rapes being committed by men, uh, women? No. Interestingly, I don't know if you're aware, you know how much it costs to build that wall per mile? $300 million. Now, Trump also said, we will be a country of law and order. Not today he didn't say that. This is when he was running for the presidency in 2016. All right, we will be a country of law and order. Well, he knows he has failed. Listen to what I'm going to say. In this regard, he himself really recently said, there is violence and danger in the streets. If there is violence and dangers in the streets, we're not a country of law and order. All right. The problem here is Trump creates the violence. In most instances, there have been studies done on this. More than 90 percent of the Black Lives Matter and liberal uh, groups protesting, there's no trouble. The trouble comes when Trump's followers, the right, the far right, the terrorist groups, the white supremacists, these Aquins now, and I don't know how many others, when they come, they're the troublemakers. They're responsible for more than 90% of the altercations because they bring violence with them. And now you do have a, a war going on between, uh, the I'll say, the liberals and the conservatives or the far right and the far left. Uh, but the violence is his fault. But no, it's not his fault. It's the fault of those liberals. It's the fault of Pelosi, the fault of Biden, and the fault of Harris. Beware, beware. All right. He also said, and I quote, I will be the greatest job president that God ever created. I will be the greatest job president God ever created. As of September 1st, and now it's September 8th, as of September 1st, there were 5 million less jobs on that day than when Trump took office almost four years ago. He has the worst job record of any modern president. Now, I look, 
The papers are telling us this week. Ten and a half million jobs he created. I think the number is exaggerated, very much exaggerated. He did it in the last quarter. The job market went up. It goes up every summer. You have people who go to work because it's summertime and vacation places, etc. They're working as minimum wage or ten bucks, eleven bucks an hour, and they work the summer, so they're employed. Doesn't matter; they may have been making more money before, but the summer's over. Labor Day is past. What's going to happen the next quarter? His numbers have to come down. That's the way it works. How about this one? I love. We will build the roads, highways, bridges, tunnels, airports, and the railways of tomorrow. The railways of tomorrow. What has he built? He did not even have presented to Congress a infrastructure bill. He didn't even go to step one, Trump, and say to the Republicans in the Senate, put together a bill for infrastructure. He did not suggest one to Pelosi and sit down and negotiate with her and McConnell to get an infrastructure bill. We need roads. We need highways. We need bridges. We need tunnels. We need new airports. We need new railways. We got the worst railways in the world, okay? Now, when you do these things and you do start building these things, it creates jobs automatically. All this construction creates jobs. Go back to when Eisenhower was president in the 1950s. He knew when the Vietnam veterans were coming back, they had to have jobs and there wouldn't be enough work for them. What did he do? He had passed an infrastructure bill. Bill. He built new highways all over the country. He built the highway from the eastern seaboard to the western seaboard. And he created Thousands, if not millions of jobs, long-term, good-paying jobs. I know. I was a recipient of one. I was in college. I was in college. I needed a job. And I got a job driving a dump truck, piles of dirt on it, at a road construction site in Rome, New York, 14 miles from my hometown of Utica. Two summers I worked there. I made big money working on a highway construction site that the government was paying for. And everybody was working. As far as the eye could see, people were working, doing different jobs, building these roads. And I was one of the persons that benefited. He also said, we will provide the American people with the truth and nothing else. I'm laughing. I choke on my list. We will provide the American people with the truth and nothing else. Well, the Washington Post has been a fact checker, fact checker, and has kept track. Trump has lied or misled the American public with his statements more than 2,000 times. Moving on. Uh, Trump. He's got a, I think he's got a bad mind, but he's got a bad mouth, too. Uh, He's got a bad mouth. The dirty thoughts or bad thoughts in his head, his mind, come out through his mouth. Uh, He said this week, this was a big thing, and I think this is the worst thing he has ever said, and this is going to be his biggest problem. He's going to lose more votes because of this statement than any others. And what did he say? He said, our military They're losers and suckers because they go fight. He said that the dead in the French Cemetery, the American dead from World War I, Marines, they were losers and suckers. What the hell's the matter with this guy? These are people who gave up their lives to defend our country, to help our country. They had mothers and fathers and grandparents, sisters and brothers living today who have sorrow within their bodies when they think about what happened. I don't care how many years ago you lose somebody. They come to mind every now and then. He's the one, Trump, who said McCain was no hero. And why wasn't McCain a hero? He says because he got captured. People who get captured are not heroes. This man does not understand. Now, let's talk about the military. Yet. I'm going to stay with the military. Trump said yesterday, I caught him out. He was being answering question session on TV. Uh, he said, it isn't the, the soldiers that are going to be mad at me. You know, the, 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 the Army and Navy and Marine people, 
the, the, not the lower class he didn't use that term, but the ones who are not officers. But I'm going to tell you who's mad at me. The generals and the admirals. The generals and the admirals, yes. And he in, insinuated, he inferred that somehow they're connected up with the military-industrial complex and those big bills that he had money allocated for, with that provided more money in the last three years than we've ever provided for the military before. And somebody might be on the take here. That's the impression I got. Somebody might be on the take. Because from my perspective, the way I see it, we, all this money in three years, what have we gotten for it? How many new ships? How many new planes? We don't have a defense system to stop the Chinese missiles with nuclear warheads who, who will be sent from those new islands and from vessels or airplanes in the South China Sea. They will hit the American shore, New York, Washington, D.C. We have no defense against them yet. We have not developed that defense. So I don't believe somebody's getting, somebody's getting a kickback here. I don't know who. I can't believe the generals and the admirals, but maybe, yes, who the hell knows these days about anything. But somebody in there, probably civilians, somebody saying, look, I'll get you an extra billion dollars. You give me a piece of the action, $250,000. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. And that is what's happening. I'll tell you, and, and I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I wrote about this several times in the last several years. I've written about talked about it on this blog, and I've written about it elsewhere. Do you know in the 19 years we were in Afghanistan, what was the biggest product coming out of Afghanistan? Their crop. Heroin! The poppy! <laughs> the poppy! The poppy flowers. Heroin was coming out of uh, Afghanistan. In the 19 years we were there, with all the soldiers we had there, with all the deaths our people suffered, and the Afghan people also. How many died? How many civilians died? How many communities were literally bombed out? Not one poppy field was ever destroyed. Not one poppy field was ever bombed. Now, how does that hit you, huh? <laughs> and somebody had to be on the I said it. They got to be on the take someplace here. All right, moving on here. Uh, I'd like to know how Donald Trump attracts crooks to be uh, part of his Washington hierarchy. Uh, so far, eight people working at the highest level of government under Trump. Trump appointees have been arrested and convicted of crime. Some are doing jail time. He just, you know, you go, someone told me once, you... Go to bed with a dog, you wake up with fleas. Trump seems to pick the bad people, and he goes to bed with him, with them. And when he and when he wakes up, he's got fleas. He gets, they bring the badness with them that attaches to him. Or it might work the other way too. I don't know, but I want to talk about Louis DeJoy, our Postmaster General. He's the most recent top level. A uh, Trump appointee. He's going to jail. Oh, he's only been postmaster general since July. Here's a fella uh, that was born in Brooklyn, really had no money, became a multimillionaire. He sold his business in July for six, last year rather, I'm sorry, last year for $61 million. He built it himself. God bless him. Anyone that can do that, I admire, I respect, $61 million. Uh, he became a big fundraiser for the Republican Party. He gave big donations of, on his own. And he also, in the state of North Carolina, threw his factories down there. He was able to get his employees to give a lot of money. Nothing had ever happened like this in the United States before, that a man's employees thought so much of the the, the political thinking of their leader, their president, their CEO, that they gave money to the CEO's candidates for office, which in this case were DeJoy's Republicans. So Trump recognized him, made him postmaster general. Since he became postmaster general, he has done everything that Trump wanted. He's tearing out the mailboxes, the sorting machines. All why? Because Trump wants 
them. He knows there's going to be a lot of mail-in ballots. He doesn't want them to be processed timely, so many of them will not be able to be counted. And this Louis DeJoy is dancing to his tune 100%. Where is he going to jail? He testified last week before Congress. He was asked specifically, specifically, your employees gave a lot of money to political candidates. Did you ever reimburse them afterwards with a bonus? In other words, the employee made a donation, and down the road they got a bonus as part of their paycheck equal to the money they had contributed to the Republican candidate, all of which made Louis DeJoy look good. And he said no three times. Well, they're coming out of the woodwork, people who did this, and he's being looked at seriously by the Attorney General of North Carolina. The feds can't get him because the statute of limitations is passed. I don't think they'd be able to get him anyhow with Attorney General Barr at the helm. But the Attorney General down in New North Carolina, no statute of limitations. He's on his way to getting him. He's going to get him. And he deserves to be gotten. The guy's a liar. Under oath, he commits perjury besides. Trump said, when he was running for the presidency in 2016, I quote, the most basic duty of government is to defend the lives of its own citizens. The most basic duty of government is to defend the lives of its own citizens. Any government that fails to do so is a government unworthy to lead. Any government that fails to do so is a government unworthy to lead. What am, I'm, I'm just putting this in to attack one thing uh, that's happened that's horrible. Today, more than 190,000 people in the United States have died of coronavirus, okay, which Trump has screwed up. Trump is the one responsible for the death of most of these people. The disease kills, we know it, but not to the tune of 190 million. We're the worst in the, in the world of all the nations. This is horrible. Uh, you know, we have 4% the United States of the world's population. 4%, nothing. But yet we have 22% of the world's coronavirus cases. All because Trump did not do his job at the beginning. He, he said, oh, this is going to be nothing. Don't worry about it. And then he lies. The best testing in the world. It's China's fault. This is the China virus. By calling it the China virus, he's got China so pissed off. We're going to end up in a war with China. Uh, and China, from my perspective, has a more powerful military today than we have because we haven't done our job in, in the last 10, 20 years in improving our military. Okay. Uh, there's something evil in Donald Trump. This is what Lewis says. Uh, he's got to have an evil mind because he does so many evil things, okay? The man we know is a liar. He's also a sociopath or a psychopath. They're almost the same. He's got problems mentally. And if you don't understand, look at him. See what he says. Listen to what he says. He's horrible. He's horrible. He lies. He twists. He does the wrong thing. This man is destroying our country. When he destroys our country, he's destroying me, you, our families, our children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So... One last point, because my time is running out here. There was a saying I, I remember from grammar school. A match has a head but no brains. A match, because we had matches in those days, not cigarette lighters. A match, you struck it, has a head but no brain. Donald Trump is like a match. He has no brains. That's the show for tonight, my friends. Hope you enjoyed. I love doing the show. My numbers go up every week. I keep telling you that. It's, it's amazing. Uh, keep listening. Tell your friends. Keep telling your friends. I'm glad you joined me. I appreciate uh, your willingness to listen to what I have to say. I look forward to being with you again next week. <laughs>